Welcome to the WREL Daily Download. I'm your host, Amanda Lamb. It's hard to believe that it's been a year since witnesses say a teenage boy opened fire on a Raleigh Greenway in the Headingham community, killing five people. To mark the anniversary, WREL has been speaking with people whose lives were changed forever by this tragedy. In this episode, anchor and reporter Ashley Rowe joins us to share her powerful experience interviewing Tom Carnatz, the husband of one of the victims, Sue Carnatz, who went jogging that day and never came home, leaving three children behind. Ashley, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So take us back to that day in October of 2022. What did Tom say about what he saw that day and what made him worry initially that his wife, Sue, might not be safe? Well, let me start by saying Tom works from home and Sue decided once she had her three kids that she wanted to be at home and homeschool the three boys. And this was October 13th at about 4.15 in the afternoon. She decided that she was going to go for a run something she does every day. Tom and Sue met in the running community. They're big runners. So she went for her run. Tom doesn't think anything of it. An hour later, Tom decides he's going to go for a run too. And she has geo-tracking on her phone. So he was able to see which direction she was running in. These folks go on long runs. He decided to go in a different direction. She was heading north on the Noose River Trail. He decided to head south. By the time he was halfway through his run, he noticed there were a lot of helicopters in the sky and there were a lot of police around. And he actually asked one of the police officers, hey, what's going on? And they said there's a guy in camo shooting other people. And so Tom didn't really think too much of it. He ran home. He noticed that Sue from that geo tracker hadn't really been moving. So he he got home and he confirmed with his parents who were staying at their house at the time and said, is Sue home yet? And they said, no, she's not home yet. So he turned on the TV, saw what was going on. Now he's starting to get concerned. Absolutely. He had to be. So he and his dad went to the area where he knew she was sort of staying still. He figured that she was just sort of penned in by the police. Maybe couldn't get back, maybe a barricade. Sure. Exactly. And then... He realized pretty soon after that what had happened. Yeah. How did he find out that his wife was one of the victims? By about 9 p.m., he and his dad were still out there, and an officer came over and broke the news. And that had to be absolutely horrendous. Worst possible nightmare. Well, we will talk about how Tom and his family are coping after the break. Welcome back to the WREL Daily Download. So, I know you said uh, in your reporting that one of the hardest things that Tom had to do that day was to go home and tell his three boys what happened. I mean, how did he describe that moment when he was talking to you? He said it was the worst moment he had to deal with throughout this whole saga. Over the course of the last 12 months, when he thinks about what is the hardest moment, it was that when he had to tell his three boys that their mom had died. Um, They are 11, 14, and 15 years old now. And not only was she their mom, she was also their teacher. You know, so so they were spending all day with her. You can only imagine how much of a best friend she was to them as well. Right. And this uh, losing that, that void of being with her almost every waking moment has got to be unbelievable. So I know um, along the Greenway where Sue was killed, there's a there's a small memorial and people leave messages of hope. I think you said they paint rocks um, and put some inspirational messages there yeah. to support him and the family. Does that help Tom and his family at all cope with what, what happened? You know, it's interesting. When he and I met, we actually met on the Noose River Trail on the Greenway, the same Greenway where she died. And I said to him, this is the trail that you and Sue would run. Is Do you still run on this trail? I mean, you've invited me onto this trail, so I've got to think that you feel comfortable enough. And what he wound up telling me really surprised me that the day after she died, he decided, I need to do something normal. I'm going to go for a run. So he goes for a run, and while he's on that run, he thinks, I can never go in that same direction where Sue died. 
couple days later, he realized there's something in me that's telling me, no, I need to go back there. And now he goes back to that memorial twice a week, three times a week to say hi to Sue. That is a place where he is able to reflect. It's sometimes very difficult therapy for him, but he does describe it as therapy where he will go and if he's feeling sorry for himself and feels like he needs a bit of strength, he'll go there to try to get that strength from Sue, from his wife. That's incredible. And, you know, I'm a runner. And when I first heard about this and I've been on the Noose River Trail, it really struck me in a different way because running is the kind of thing that you're out there, you're feeling free, you're safe, you're in nature. And so for something like this to happen um, to somebody who's just, you know, exercising is is pretty unbelievable when you think about it. So the currently there is the case going through the criminal justice system. Um, the teenager who was charged in this case has now been moved into adult court. It's going through the process. But this is not Tom's focus, correct? No. And, you know, we at WRAL have been speaking with a lot of the family members and and loved ones of the victims who died in this shooting. And everyone handles these kinds of situations differently. One of the the loved ones of one of the victims has said, I want to go to the trial and I want to be a participant in, in watching it and I want to see how this unfolds. Not Tom. At this point, he says, look, as long as the shooter is behind bars. And again, let me preface by saying the, the the current guy that's charged has not been convicted. But to Tom, as long as this person is behind bars, then he's fine. He, he doesn't care about where he is or what he's doing. He just doesn't want him out. And he even said, you know, the the current laws are, are that he wouldn't be able to, if, if found convicted, he wouldn't be able to get Elig- the death penalty. Right. He wouldn't be eligible because of his age at the time of the crime. Right? right. But Tom said, even if he was eligible, I wouldn't care because that doesn't help me in any way. Doesn't bring Sue back. Doesn't change the fact that yeah. she's gone from her children's lives. And I, I know that Tom and his family, you know, obviously want to keep Sue's legacy alive. My understanding is that she just was such a kind and compassionate person. How, how does he plan to do this? He just says it's a it's a constant effort of trying to harness Sue's spirit of kindness and compassion. And if he can be kinder to everyone, that might not make a huge amount of change, might not be political policy change, but it might impact somebody's life and make them feel a little bit better and pay it forward. So he just wants to see a kinder world. You know, he says there is a gun problem, but there is more so a hate problem in this country. And he doesn't want to be a participant in that. He wants to focus on kindness. That's that's really, that's amazing. I know um, we talked shortly before we recorded this, that this, this is a personal story to you because you experienced another shooting where you worked in Buffalo, another mass shooting. Tell us just briefly what happened there and and how this kind of has colored your view of these situations and and made them really uh, probably more emotional in a way. For sure. I, um, you know, I I don't like to make stories about me, but the it was very important to me to, to speak with Tom because what he went through is something that I very, very well could have gone through myself. My husband was in the grocery store in Buffalo an hour before a shooter went through and killed 10 people and shot that grocery store up. And I just wanted to learn from Tom how he is doing, where he harnesses his strength, because I think we can all learn from that. Um, There are a lot of shootings that are going on around the world and specifically in this country. And um, my husband was an hour away from having to experience a shooting himself. And so um, I just, you know, I I wanted his perspective. I wanted to to learn from Tom's perspective. And I wanted to do it from a trauma-informed perspective. You know, these, these people have gone through so much. And I wanted him to know that we as the, the press are not here to exploit his story, but are, are really wanting to help him share his story if he wanted to share it. And he did. And he, you know, he did it in a really thoughtful way. And so I'm grateful to him to have been willing to sit down with me and be so vulnerable with me and, and talk about just truly what it's been like for him. Well, thank you, Ashley, for your thoughtful reporting on this. And We really appreciate it and appreciate you sitting down with the WREL Daily Download. 
For more news from WREL, sign up for the WREL Morning Briefing Newsletter. You'll be informed and ready to face the day with one concise email. Sign up at WREL.com slash newsletter. As always, thanks for listening to the WREL Daily Download.